Now, there's a fundamental mistake in the way that we think about and compare 5G with Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi evolves faster. Now, we know that 5G stands for fifth generation, which also means that there was a 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G starting back in the early 1980s when I was just a twinkle in my father's eye. Let's just go back to the turn of the century where 3G was starting out and it took us all the way from 2000 to 2010. In that time, Wi-Fi advanced about four times from an infant to a very mature technology. Now just think, in 2000 when 3G was starting, USB flash drives were brand new, just beginning to replace floppy disks for storage. Then in 2007, just seven years later, the iPhone changed everything, which goes to show that 10 years in tech is a super long time. Now around 2010, 4G was introduced and has been our cellular technology for the last 10 plus years. And in that time, Wi-Fi took another three huge steps in speed and reliability. But it's not just about faster speeds. Wi-Fi also had the flexibility to adapt to the cloud in that span and captured the capabilities of distributed networking, big data, and machine learning for operations. What this all means is that for each decade-long generation of cellular, there are at least three generations of Wi-Fi evolution. Now, 5G marketing often casts a big, bold vision for our long-term tech future because it's a long-term technology. It'll take us all the way into the 2030s. But we never get these grand, decade-long tech visions from Wi-Fi. Now, maybe we could get more optimistic and excited about the Wi-Fi future if we thought not just in terms of Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, but also Wi-Fi 7, 8, and potentially 9, all within the 5G era. With that, we'd get new technologies like Wi-Fi sensing, automated secure connectivity, lower latency and better QoS, as well as lower cost architectures, which everyone loves. Now, through that lens, the future of both Wi-Fi and 5G looks pretty exciting.